ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் ஹவு டு கனெக்ட் அண்ட் அஷ்யூர் சர்வர் வித் லோட் ரன்னர் அண்ட் வி வில் சி ஹவு டு அப்லோட் ஆர் ஹவு டு பப்ளிஷ் த ஸ்கிரிப்ட்ஸ் இன் டு அஷ்யூர் ரிப்போஸ் and we will see how to commit or make the changes in the Azure repo. So since I have got this as a comment in one of my videos on how to integrate the load runner with GitHub that we have a subscriber asking us on how to connect an Azure server and to do the same functions that GitHub is doing here. So what, so what, are, we, what are the functions that we did with load runner or by integrating load runner with the GitHub or we have created a repository in the github and we have pushed the changes to the repository and then we have committed those changes so these are the actions that we did in github so our subscriber has asked us to try this with the azure repos so before we move on to the video let's see what is the difference between github and azure repos and why do we need or why do we use the azure repo so here is my github repository and here is my azure repos repository i have here so this is basically the windows or this is how the application looks so here is the azure repos repository and here is the github repository so what is the difference so github is basically the remote repository hosting service and development resource that is utilized for code sharing it is used for version control it is used for collaboration and providing the user web based graphical interface and in fact this is known as the globe's huge coding community where multiple organizations and companies utilizes this platform for collaboration and to facilitate project management and in fact there are almost 73 million developers were on board developing and uploading their code into github and github allows the users to utilize the cli the command line interface for communication between local and remote repositories and it helps the project team members work together on a project from anywhere in the globe while facilitating collaboration and also permits users to view the previous versions from the beginning so we we all know about github so how does it work and what are the various other services so some of the essential things which i would share is they host or they have their repositories so we can create any number of repositories here either it can be a public or it can be a private and we can have any number of branches in it and we can pull the request we can upload our code and we can commit the code and these are the basic thing of the github so what is the azure repos and why do we need azure repos so azure repos is based on version control tool that the users can utilize to manage their code and in fact the repos is part of the devops platform so where we have the boards where we have the repos and where we can have the files we can upload the files we can do the commits we can push the code and we can create branches we can assign tags to them and then finally we can pull the requests from the remote repository and then we have the pipelines where we have the environments we have various releases we have libraries and various other activities and then we have the test plans where we can run the tests so this is part so i mean the, this repos is again a part of the azure devops environment where the users can utilize to manage our code and it's a best decision to use the version control for software projects no matter small or large and these version control systems are software that helps the user while tracking changes that they make in code over time and again this is something similar to what we have in github so now let us see how to do or what we have planned to do so first thing is creating a repository in the azure devops repos so let's go to the repos part and now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a new repository and the new repository is going to be import from load 
runner and this is the repository we have and the repository type should be git so make sure you have the repository type as git and i'm having the readme file and then we have your repository will be initialized with the main branch yes we will be initializing this repository with the main branch and i'm clicking on create create button so now we have our repository created so so far we initially had the first ac devops pipeline which i have created for the other demonstration and then i had the test repository and now i have this import from loadrunner repository and in fact we can even import the repositories and we have the option to manage the repositories where we can make the settings changes and we can set up the policies and we can make changes to the security so this is a quite detailed one which we can see so under the settings we can set up the default branch name for the new repositories and i have make it as off and then we can allow the users to manage permissions for their create branch created branches so any user who creates the branches will have the permissions on it and then we can create the pull requests as as draft by default so while choosing this any new pull request will be created as draft by default for all repositories in the project and when we create any pull request as a draft we have the help of making any changes before we move it or before we pull the request and then when it comes to policies we have lots of policies where we have a policy of committing the author i mean the email validation part and then we have the file path validation and then we have the case enforcement we have the reserved names and we have we have the maximum path length and where we have the maximum file so, so these are the various policies which we have for the repositories part and then when it comes to the security we have lots and lots of options where we have different level of access where we have the build administrators we have the contributors we have the project administrators we have the readers we have the project collaboration administrators we have the project collaboration collection build service accounts and then we have the project collection service accounts so these are the default set of access and in case if you want to delete any of them we have delete we can delete it so let's now move on to the repository spot again so now we are in the files so here we have the import from load runner repository so as a first step i have created the repository so i'll mark it as done and now we'll move on to the push repository and for that what we have to do is we have to click on the clone button and then i'm just copy pasting this url here and then i'm going back to the load runner and in the integrations part i'm going to the git options i'm create clicking on create local repository i'm clicking on track and once i click on track you can automatically see this red check button and then i'm going to integrations again going to git options and then i'm choosing connect to git and i'm pasting the remote repository url which i have copied from the location and then the username and password so in case if you cannot get the username and password what you can do is you can just click on generate get credentials and automatically your credentials will get so and you can get your username and you can get your password so i'm just copying the password here so i have copied the password now and let's move to the load runner and here i'm pasting the password and now let's connect before that let me just confirm the remote repository url once so yes we have got the remote repository url correct so so far we have we can just verify it here we have no files updated here or uploaded here so let's go back here and let's click on continue 
so now we have connected to the azure repos and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to so i'm going to push the repository i'm going to get options and doing the push and now the load owner will ask us to commit the changes before we push the code to the remote repository so i'm clicking on ok and i'm going to commit And the commit message is going to be import or it is going to be push scripts from load runner on the 31st of 20 31st december 2022 and i'm clicking on commit so now we have committed the script so we have committed the changes so this is done now we are going to push the repository again so let's go to git options and i'm going to push the repository and yes the we are processing the changes and these are the changes or these are the scripts which are going to push let me click on push and yes we have successfully uploaded so let me just go to import from load runner let me just refresh it and here we can see you have updated master just now so before we get this code that whatever we have uploaded everything is in the master now so here we can see all the code the little slow correlation in here so that is lock correlation code and we can see the whatever the the code that we have in the scripts of the v user end is here the v user in it the actions so this is the code we have so the first transaction we have in the script so we'll just confirm the same so yes we have the same code in here so now everything is in the branch which is in the master branch and it's not into the main branch so what we have to do now is we will have to so we have pushed the repository successfully and now we have to create a pull request so let's create a pull request and for that we'll have to choose this create a pull request and now we can see we automatically get this title that is pushing the scripts from load runner and the description is we have this one and i'm just creating creating a pull request so even you can see here whatever the message the comment message that i have given here automatically has come here and in case if you want to add any reviewers you can add any reviewers in your team any of your peers to just validate the code and then in case if you have any work items to link automatically it it, can, it has to be any epic or it has to be any issues or it has to be any subtask you can automatically link it here and in case if you have any tags you can automatically link it here and i'm creating the pull request and it looks for any merge conflicts so since this is the first time i don't think there will be any merge conflicts yes i'm right so there are no merge conflicts and here you can check the files automatically here so any files that we want we can automatically see them here so mostly the changes will be in the actions file so we can just check them here and then so now we have completed it so i'm approving the pull request and once i approve it i'm completing and now i can just see so we are just we have three options so either to merge no fast forward or either we can select squash commit or we can rebase and fast forward or we can do a semi linear merge and just choosing the default one which is the merge no fast forward and i'm clicking on complete merge 
so now we can see that the pull request is completed and when I'm going now I'm going back to the repo which is the import from load runner so you can see here so previously we were not able to see here since it was in a different branch and now we can see here it's in the main branch so in case if we want to create any new branch automatically we can create something like a develop or something like a, a feature branch and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a branch which is based on the main branch so before that let's we have created a pull request and we have approved the pull request and that too is done and now we have we can even create a branch which is the develop branch and now in case if we want to make so we are making some changes so say for example I'm just renaming this action to action update and what I'm doing now is I'm just saving this file so I'm just so before that let me just try to commit it so I'm just committing the change so in case so this is to make sure that any of my changes are getting uploaded or updated or pushed being pushed into the repository so I'm just making so updating the action folder and I'm clicking on commit so now we have committed the change so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the change So the processing is happening and yes we are updating the action folder and I'm pushing the change again to the remote repository and it I think it has happened and let's now move on to the repository so now let me refresh this repository and again we could see there is a master branch which we have got and this master branch we can see here so the action is updated to action update so the same way so just creating a pull request and approve the changes and once we make the approval so we can complete the or we can just merge the code to the master branch or to the main branch so here we can see whatever the commits we have made so the previous one was pushing the scripts from load runner and the second commit was updating the action folder and then we had the pushes so these are the three pushes we had so the first push and then we had deleted the branch and then I have created another push from the load runner and so these are the branches we have we have the main branch where we have the main code and then I have created a develop branch where we in case if I want to make any changes I can use this develop branch and this is the master branch which I have created from load runner and I can upload it or I can push the code anytime I make changes and these are the pull requests so I have no active pull request and I have completed a pull request recently and then there are no abandoned pull requests so I I think I have answered Ruben's question. So with that we come to an end and I believe this video would have been very useful to you. So until we meet you with in another interesting video, it's Baba from Vasan Shanmugam and Little Sla. Please do ask any questions. I will try to answer your question like what Ruben or any of our other subscribers do. So until we meet you in another interesting video, it's Baba from Vasan Shanmugam and Little Sla.